Goblin launch detected. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Just a heads up, but Flipside Gaming is going to be giving away a Zendikar Rising set booster box. The contest will run from August 31st all the way to September 25th, 2020. The typical rules apply of one entry per household. You'll be entered for your chance to win when you use my promo code on an order of $10 or more, or if you send Flipside Gaming a stamped self-addressed envelope or postcard to the address found above. So good luck and have fun. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game is a Wizard's Tower special with Aiden playing as Yisundek. He keeps Copperhorn Scout, Beast Whisperer, Wilderness Reclamation, Guardian Project, Marwyn, Forest, and Llanowar Elves. Emil is playing Duretti, keeping a perpetual timepiece, Mesmeric Orb, Sin Prodder, Dreamstone Hedron, and three snow-covered mountains. Skylar has his Morphon God deck, keeping Sulphur Falls, two snow-covered forests, Unclaimed Territory, the Scarab God, Ristic Study, and Afara. We've got an Animar deck being piloted by Chris, keeping Gruel Rage Beast, Defense of the Heart, Sarkin's Unsealing, Mountain, Command Tower, Thornwood Falls, and Is It Boilerworks. Chris wins the die roll and starts us off. Chris plays a tap Thornwood Falls, gaining one as it comes in. Aiden plays a tap Mossward Bridge and gets to hide away a card. Emil plays a snow covered mountain that he's altered. Skylar plays a tap Sulphur Falls, passing back to Chris. Chris draws and plays a mountain, passing. Aiden plays a forest and casts Llanowar Elves, also passing. Emil plays a snow covered mountain and then puts out a Mesmeric Orb. Skylar untaps and has to mill one to the Mesmeric Orb. It's Ulamog who shuffles itself back into Skylar's library. He then draws for turn and plays a snow covered forest, passing. Chris plays a command tower and then gets to tap three mana for his commander. Aiden untaps and has to mill one from the orb. It's Nykthos, and he plays a forest for turn. He drops Marwyn, tapping three for her, and then pays one for a Copperhorn Scout. The scout comes in, giving Marwyn a plus one plus one counter as it enters. Emil untaps and mills two snow-covered mountains off the top of his library. He plays a snow-covered mountain from hand, and pays three mana for a metal worker, passing. Skylar plays another snow-covered forest, and taps all of his lands for Kadama's Reach. He goes into his library, searching for a basic for the field, and one for his hand. Chris has to mill three to the Mesmeric Orb trigger, the first of which is a World Spine Worm, which, partly like the Ulamog, shuffles itself back in, but not the rest. Chris does catch himself where he realizes that he shouldn't have milled the other cards first, and should have milled the worm first, and then triggered the other separately, so he puts those cards back into his library, and mills two new ones after shuffling. He then draws for a turn, and plays out Lifecrafter's Bestiary. We then see an Is It Boilerworks coming in, bouncing the command tower back to hand. Aiden mills, and realizes he should mill one more, pitching the Reclamation Sage he accidentally drew. He then plays out Yissen in his main phase, and goes to combat. He swings the scout at Skylar, and untaps his creatures, which has him milling even more cards because of the orb. Aiden then taps more mana for a Wilderness Reclamation, and then quests for Renewal. He asks the table if he can reorder how he casts it, so he can benefit from the quest being out, and the table is fine with it, as Aiden adds two counters to the enchantment. He then moves to his end step, and Aiden untaps some lands at the end of turn, which has him milling more to the Mesmeric Orb. Emil has his Mesmeric Orb triggers, milling more cards as he untaps, and then draws for turn. He taps the Metalworker, revealing three artifacts, and gaining six colorless. He uses all that mana for a Dreamstone Hedron, and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. 
Seven mana is then tapped, four of which brings out Doretti. He then upticks Doretti, discarding Mindslaver and drawing one, before playing out a Sin Prodder and passing. Skylar mills his top four and draws return. He plays a Snow Covered Plains and pays three mana for Solemnity, which seems like a solid answer to Yissen. He then passes turn. Chris plays a Tap Sim at Guildgate and has enough mana to drop Sarkin's Unsealing. He then swings Animar at Skylar, since Animar won't be getting any bigger at this point, and he passes turn. At the end of turn, Aiden taps 3 mana, using his copy of Cross and Grip to take out Solemnity. Aiden untaps and has to mill a decent chunk off the top. He then draws for turn, and he's built a remarkable amount of lands, and decides to activate Yissen in his main phase, putting a verse counter onto the bard and going to find a 1-drop. It's Aiden's copy of Krurian Ranger, who as it enters, triggers Marwyn, giving her a plus 1 plus 1 counter. He then taps Marwyn and the Llanowar Elves to cast Guardian Project, and goes to combat with the Copperhorn again. Once more it goes at Skylar, and it triggers as it attacks, which untaps his creatures, and this has Aiden milling more. Skylar then takes the 1, and Aiden also gains more counters on his quest for renewal. He then retaps the Llanowar Elves, and Marwyn for 4 mana, casting a Beast Whisperer, who adds another counter to Marwyn as it enters. Aiden then passes, untapping his lands with the Wilderness Trigger, and milling himself for another 3. With a now active quest, Aiden untaps his creatures with a mill, and mills more cards while a mill does the same for the orb triggers. A mill then moves to resolve the Sin Prodder trigger, and he reveals a duplicant, and none of his opponents want to take this 6 so they let him have it. He then draws her turn, and in his main phase, taps the Metal Worker to reveal another 3 artifacts making 6 colorless. He uses that mana to cast the newly revealed duplicant, and as it comes in, has the duplicant XL a Beast Whisperer. Emil then plays at a perpetual timepiece, the same one we've seen him reveal for the last two turns now, and taps it once it resolves to mill himself for another two cards. Emil then down takes Doretti, sacrificing the duplicant, to return to field the Sandstone Oracle. As it enters, Emil picks Skylar, who currently has a full 7, and draws 3 from the Oracle as a result. Emil then casts a Mana Vault, and then Alhamret's Archive. At the end of turn, Aiden activates Yissen again, going to find a 2-drop. He puts out a Priest of Titania, he then uses a Quirion Ranger, bouncing a Forest Pack to his hand to untap Yissen again, and taps him again, activating his ability, finding a 3-drop, in this case, a Manglehorn. It comes in, and blows up the Mesmeric Orb. Skylar untaps, and Aiden untaps his creatures. Skylar is happy he doesn't have to mill anything, and he plays a Temple of the False God, and brings out Morophon. The Changeling comes in, and Skylar has it reduced the cost of gods, passing. At the end of turn, Aiden does the Yissen stuff again, activating to find a 4-drop, and then activating him once it's resolved to find a 5-drop after returning a forest to his hand to untap the Yissen with the Kryrian Ranger. He's still searching for both as we move to Chris's turn. Chris plays a Command Tower and casts Lurking Predators, which is a fun card. Aiden at this point has revealed and put to field an Elvish Piper and a Seedborn Muse. This gives him another counter to Marwyn, and as Chris passes, Aiden is able to activate Yissen again, putting the 6 verse counter on his commander. This lets him find a Bane of Progress, which takes out a good chunk of permanence as it enters, some of which is Aiden's even. The Bane ends up with 11 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and he then moves to his turn. Aiden untaps and draws, pretty pleased with his board state despite having only a single land. He realizes he should have been drawing way more cards from the Guardian project, but feels it's a little too late and then to add insult to injury, also realizes it, it should have been gone from his bane. He then taps the priest, counting up his elves for 6 mana, and uses some of it to activate Yissen once more. He puts the 7th first counter on him, and goes to find a creature. It's Regal Force, which enters and sees 11 green creatures, which means Aiden gets to draw 11 cards. He then uses some of the remaining mana floating from the priest for Tamur Sabretooth, and taps Marwyn for more mana. Two of that mana is spent on Explorer, drawing Aiden a card and letting him play at another land. He then passes and discards down to 7. Emil has a Sin Prodder trigger, revealing a Mind Stone, which the table lets him draw. 
He draws for turn, and uptakes to ready, discarding two and drawing two. He then plays at Sunbird's Invocation, passing. Skylar plays an unclaimed territory, and names Gauze as enters. He then taps it for a Soul Ring, and plays at Rhystic Study. Skylar is then able to cast the reduced costing of Fara, followed by a cheap Aronis. He goes to combat with Morophon, and despite wanting to swing an Aiden, can't really do so effectively, and he hits Chris instead before passing turn. Skylar draws on Chris's turn from the Afara trigger, and Chris draws. He drops Defense of the Heart, which will definitely trigger on the next time around, if it comes to it, and he passes turn. Aiden untaps, and taps his Priest of Titania for mana. He then plays out Dryad Arbor, and a Findhorn Elves, giving Marwyn a plus one plus one counter as it enters. He finishes up with a Wall of Roots, and activates Yisin once more to find the only green 8-drop that matters. It's a Crater Hoof Behemoth, like I'm sure you were expecting, and his board becomes huge enough to just do this and take his opponents out. So this is a classic example of when people sit down and say they're going to play one of their better decks, and there's not really an associated number or power level with what they consider their best. I will tell you that despite the fact that it seemed like Aiden was stomping on everyone, Everyone at the table was having a good time, and they actually played several games after this one. That being said, I do want to look at some turns and see what could have been done differently to maybe prevent Aiden from getting as far ahead as he did. First up, as soon as Emil had discarded his Mindslaver, you can bet your bottom dollar I would have been recurring that every single turn and messing with Aiden. It probably would have made people very upset if that were the case, but Yisin gets out of control incredibly fast, and if he's able to find key pieces using his ability, which let's face it, that's what he's built around, you really have a hard time stopping him. If Emil had used the Mindslaver to mess with those activations and find suboptimal creatures in the line, and I think would have messed Aiden up a lot, but then again, I'm also not a practice Yisin player, so I don't know how well the deck works when you have more counters than you need. The other point, which isn't really a turn so much as I wish that Chris had an extra land, because if the Gruul Rage Beast had come out a turn earlier, I think things could have changed significantly. He would have been able to take out Yissen, essentially resetting the clock and basically not guaranteeing Aiden being able to find a Crater Hoof Behemoth. But this is just me pointing out some things that I would have done differently, and like I said, the important part was that everyone had fun. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.